Tell us the Lee Tottenham story. Well, I went, when I was managing Tottenham, and, you know, after a midweek game, it's time we finished, I left the ground. I used to stay in London because I'd be in next morning for a warm down with the players. So I stayed up in central London in a hotel, and I used to go to Les Ambassadors, you know, Les yeah. Ambassadors. I've, I've had dinner with you there. Uh, I used to go there and satir I walked in about half 11. I'm going to get in, have a plate of pasta and a, one glass of red wine. Then I'm off to bed so I'm up next morning. I walk in and there's Satirius who run the place. Love, we all love Satirius. And Alex Ferguson's yeah. best pal. I walk in, Satir Harry, Harry, come and... There's no one in there. Satirius and a little Irish little guy. Harry, this is Lee Topless, the jockey. It's a little scruffy Herbert sitting there, right? So he's sitting there. I went, hello, like, Lee Topless. I said, oh, you're doing well, Lee. You're apprenticed to, with Far Richard Farley, good trainer. I said, you're, you're having a good, riding a few winners. Yes, he said, I'm riding, riding for Farley. Oh, really? I said, what are you doing down south? He said, well, I'm riding some work tomorrow. He said, I've got to go down to, uh, to, to Gosden's and somewhere else, uh, Appleby, they come up with all the big ones. You know, I'm, I'm riding a bit of work in the morning, then I'm up back up north after. Oh, really? Okay, right. He's drinking red wine, like I've never seen. Half gallons of it, bosh. Eating, he's eating everything he can get his hands on. Eating, eating. I went, How, how's your weight? What about? No, no. He said, I'm all right. I, I you know, I keep fit. And uh, before I ride, he's always run around the track twice to, to, you know. Oh, really? Okay. Anyway, now he said, I love football. He said, um, any chance of getting me a ticket for Tottenham? I said, yeah, of course. Next week we're playing AC Milan at White Hart Lane. Suddenly it's. 20 minutes to kick off. I'm in the dressing room. The players are warming up. Harry, there's a little jockey outside. Ain't got a ticket. Lee Topless. <laughs> oh, blimey. Get him in. Get him in. They get him in. Get him a best seat in the house. He's up in the director's box. <laughs> After the game, he's in my office. Right. He comes down. They're all in there. All the top players. You know, all the top people in the football. Everyone's... It's suddenly, he's in the dressing room collecting shirts. Now, he's got all the players. He's got, he's got, he's got, he's uh, got, um, Everybody's shirt. He's got Gareth Bale. He's got Modric. You know, he's got Ibra Ibrahimovic. He's got everybody's shirt. He's got a dustbin bag with about sixteen shirts in. Anyway, off he goes. Suddenly, he's on every week now. He's on the phone. I've got a Chelsea. I'm in the box next to where Abramovich's box is. I'm with Joe Jordan, Kevin Bond, Clive Allen. We're watching Chelsea play. They said, "As a little jockey, get him in again." We end up in the King's Road. He's eating tiramisu. He's eating, drinking wine. He's saying. Anyway, this goes on for five years. Harry, can you lend me a thousand pounds? I've got to go to Dubai to ride work for Godolphin, and I haven't got my what my pay packet yet from from uh, the, you know the winners. Of, I said, well, I think you had any winners this month, you know. Anyway, I lend him a few quid, give him a grand, give him a monkey. Every time I see him, I'm bunging him a few quid. Suddenly, my mate brings me one day. He said, Harry, you still seeing that lead top list? I said, he never gives me a winner. I said, he's Never tipped me a win. I said, he's, you know, I keep giving him, lending him a few quid and looking out. He's a very poor little boy. I feel sorry for him. He said, he's not Lee Topless. He works in a pub in Newmarket collecting glasses. His <laughs> name's Stevie. I went, you're kidding. Now, now I ring Satirius to tell him a story. So, <laughs> Satirius, I said, he's still seeing Lee Topless? He said, nah, he comes in here, eats the bloody food, brings his mates, never pays all food on the house, you know, because casinos, they don't charge you for the food because they think you're going to gamble. He said, he come never. I said, well, I'll tell him the story. It's not Lee Top. He said, that's amazing. He said, because last week, he said, I was at York Races with Alex in the paddock. And Lee's, I look at the programme, Lee Top, this is on number six. I went, all right, Lee. He said, he looked at me like he didn't know me. I said, that's because he does. But, you know, it was, I was so disappointed for Jamie Moore and Gary Moore, you know. Oh, go Shan, yeah. Such lovely people. They're great characters, great people. I man you know, I managed a football game last year and Jamie played for me um, in, in the game. We had a game for the Injured Jockey Fund at Cheltenham. Great day, great evening. Lots of the jockeys, all the top boys were there and we had a real race of money. And he was in my team. And what a lovely, lovely little character. What a lovely character. And his dad, I think his dad's different class, Gary, top bloke, you know. And the way that, that horse, absolutely, what a machine. And I just hope they deserve to come back next year and win the champion hurdle. I just hope they do it. Yeah, no, he, he really looks good, Gosha, doesn't he? And thinking of running him on the flat, aren't they, in the Ebor? Yeah. And then back jumping later later in the season. Because um, you go to Cheltenham a lot. I remember you, like, you've taken football teams, Tottenham have been to Cheltenham, you know. I remember you had a problem with the foreign players that they were just bored absolutely senseless. Yeah, the I they took got the Tottenham players. I got, the, I, did, I, took, I got a coach. 
uh, team, the team bus, lovely bus, all got tables, got the newspapers, we got lovely food on, we had coffee, we had someone serving coffee, serving breakfast, everything was laid on. <laughs> had a box, everything, all done. Got there, I'm looking, after five minutes, I'm looking at them, they're sitting like this, Pavlichenko and a few of them. What time are we going home? They're at Cheltenham, right? They've got a chance to walk around, see the crowds, all the shop, the horses. It didn't want to just sit there like I was putting them in prison for the day. I thought, oh my God, you know, <laughs> is it worth it sometimes? But then I've had other years with players. I took West Ham there and we had a, we had a great time. We were struggling in the relegation battle and I took them for a day out of Cheltenham. And we had a great day in the, in the tent. Stopped at an Italian restaurant on the way home with a coach. Had a drink, had a laugh, had a sing-song. And we went on a run and got ourselves out of trouble. So, it's... Uh, but no, how can you not enjoy that Cheltenham? Really amazing atmosphere. You know, uh, George Best was a genius. You know, loved playing against George. He was, he was special. So, yeah, I, I was lucky. Had a good time. We'll come on to something a bit more modern in a minute. But just playing against someone like Best in a different league that you kind of almost feared. I mean, you were a midfielder as far as I remember. Like, just going up against someone like that, did you just think, oh, no, it's best? George was a genius. I mean, and he was a great lad as well. He ended up coming here, Matt, and played at Bournemouth uh, late in his career. And he came to me one day, a true story, he came up to me, he said, I just finished training there. He said, Harry, where's Salisbury? I said, it's about 40 minutes, George. You'd love it. It was a winter, it was just start the flat season. Sun was shining, and uh, I said, it's about 40 minutes, George. He said, uh, there's racing on today. I said, yeah, I know. He said, you fancy it? I said, yeah, of course, George, I don't need. He said, can you pick me up? Uh, he said, well, all right, let me get back to the hotel, the East Anglia Hotel in Bournemouth, get changed, come and pick me up, and we'll have, lovely, George, no problem. I'll shoot home, get a few quid, whatever, get ready. I'll go and pick George up. Anyway, we went to, the, we went to Salisbury. We come out, Matt. There's two punters, one about 40 yards in front of the other, hands in pockets, walking along, done their dough. George said, Harry, give him a lift. He said, it could be me and you there in a few years. I went, you ain't wrong. So he stopped me, get him in the car. One's going to Fording Bridge, one going all the way to Bournemouth. Done their brains. We picked them up. Me and George chat. George turned around. They couldn't believe it. George best. Chatted to him all the way home. Had a right laugh about. And yeah, that was George. He was a, just a very normal guy, but an absolute genius. Matt, last night, your man last night giving a four-timer. We've got to say, if anyone doesn't know anything, and um, Quig has put up four selections at the start of the show. Off the top of my head, two of them, one at 11-2, to two, one at 7-4, to four, and the other was a little bit shorter, I think. But all four were banged in. And Harry, you know how hard it is to get one winner. That's outstanding. Matt, do you know, I always follow his... Right, when he comes on, he's a lovely guy, isn't he? You see him there, you keep moaning about his... What's he got behind? Is it his wallpaper or something? Well, he's his, got his house does look a his bit house, scary, yeah. But, yeah. And yeah. I, I always... I follow him. I do each way trebles and each way acca. Right, always, always. I took the dog out last... Took the dogs out last night, got back. I'd missed the... I missed his tips, right? I yep. didn't see what he'd given. Suddenly the first... Oh, quick as this give the first win. I thought, oh, no. Suddenly, when he when he gave the four, I was absolutely, I'll be honest, I was distraught because normally I would definitely have four trebles and an acker on his four horses. So that's life.